If you've been paying attention to the talk about immigration recently, you've heard two very different stories about what's happening at the border. Either President Biden is doing his best with the mess Trump left, or the Democrats are engaging in full-blown hypocrisy by keeping kids in cages and just not caring anymore because their guy is in charge. Our friends at the Narratives Project are helping to sort this out. They study the evolution of divergence of political narratives to help us understand the stories emerging around us based on what each side is saying, but also what they're leaving out. On the border issue, they found that the narrative on the right goes something like this. There's a battle going on at the border that is threatening the safety and security of American families. This is a natural consequence of the Biden administration's pro-immigration policies and the chaos at the border, the hypocrisy of the Democrats who are now apparently fine with kids being in cages, and it's stark. The view from the left, on the other hand, is that we have to recognize that this administration inherited a profoundly dysfunctional immigration system and we're in the middle of a pandemic. We can't just turn kids away who arrive at the border and send them back to the dangers that they are fleeing. So here's what it all looks like on Twitter. You had MSNBC pointing out to viewers in a Lawrence O'Donnell monologue saying, the real crisis at the border is the Republican Party's opposition to the humane treatment of immigrants. Here's a tweet from Republican Senator John Cornyn quoting a New York Times article that says, Biden has instead emphasized the humane treatment of immigrants. He contrasted that to more restrictive comments from Biden's Democratic predecessors in the White House. The point of the Times article was that the Democratic Party doesn't have a clear policy on immigration. <laughs> Here we have Mark Krikorian of the Center for Immigration mm -hmm. Studies tweeting an image of a chaotic scene from the naked gun with Leslie Nielsen deadpanning, nothing to see here, nothing at all. Democratic Senator Chris Murphy tweeted a link to his floor speech that he said explained how Joe Biden is doing the right thing by applying the law with humanity. Hmm. What's wrong with that? The Narrative Project found that when it comes to immigration, both the right and the left talk about the issue in terms of protection. The left wants to protect immigrant children seeking a fresh start, and the right wants to protect people, including the thousands of children coming here, from the dangers of illegal immigration happening like this, chaotic scenes. It says the nuanced truth is that the right doesn't hate immigrants, and the left doesn't hate the rule of law. Both sides agree fundamentally that immigration reform is necessary, but exactly what that should look like, like that's the debate. And we're yeah. always going to be having a debate over the virtue and morality of people who see a problem that is not getting solved by, by our, our Congress, getting solved by the government, and they just want people to be happy, they want people to be safe, they want kids to be taken care of. Um, it's impossible for Americans to have a sane immigration debate when we're not talking about legislative fixes. Yeah, it's um, it's really upsetting to me. It, it's upsetting that, and I, I've noticed this especially in recent years, it feels like the goalposts have sort of been shifted. So when people talk about um, you know, the sort of liberal or libertarian perspective on immigration, they say open borders people, open borders and all this stuff, which I think is a perfectly defensible position. But it's confusing to me that they're framing that as what the majority of liberals and libertarians believe because it sounds very scary, I think, to immigration restrictionists. But it's confusing because it's like, why aren't we talking about and regular people? Yeah, open yeah, borders fair. sounds scary to regular people. Fair, fair. Yeah. Um, but why aren't we talking about drastically increasing the number of work visas available, or student visas, or you know, the ability to have more and more people seeking refuge and seeking asylum? A lot of the times, I think you could get more reasonable people to agree on what we want if you framed it as hey, let's 3x the number of work visas available to people, let's 3x the number of student visas available to people, let's really prioritize Central American migrants uh, because that's where we're seeing this huge crisis right now. And honestly, let's make sure we're not splitting families up at the border. Those who legitimately have asylum claims, can we treat them with some amount of you know, compassion, especially when there are all these religious charities at the border with open arms waiting to receive them and take care of them? Yeah, I mean, you have to acknowledge that there's nobody who wants this situation to be happening. There are not people who want kids to be yeah. kept in cages. They no, don't no. want them to be there in the first place, coming for the hope that they're just going to be let in. That's not how anybody imagines the immigration system working. Nobody wants it to be that way. In theory, you used to have people who wanted people to get in line, right, like go through the process. But I think what libertarians understand is there's no line. You will be waiting for 30 to 40 years. The exact title of a Reason article from like, you know, a print article from 2018 or 2019. The, I mean, the premise was there is no line. And it was the story of somebody who had immigrated to the U.S. I believe um, 
you know, for academic reasons on a study visa or maybe uh, teaching a work work study visa. Um, and their, their point was basically, hey, I got really, really lucky, but a bunch of other people with the exact same profile as me, they're going to be waiting for 30 years. Yeah. I feel like what broke, and we talked about this um, two weeks ago on the show, was that immigrants are being talked about by con- different sides of the argument as potential constituencies for their voters, right? Like, so Republicans are talking a lot about like Venezuelans and what Colombians. What can you do for me, right? Yeah, it's yeah. Like, and, and the left has been talking for decades about how like yeah. anybody who comes to the country threatens the Republican party. Like that's how they've always reported it. Whites are gonna be a minority, Republicans need to get in line or they're gonna, if they don't get behind or, or back Hispanics, um, you know, vice versa then they start to think of them as the opposition and they start to think about immigration as running up the numbers for the other team and then it becomes unworkable. Yeah. You're not gonna be able to come to a consensus on what's good immigration policy if it's about who's gonna be getting more voters in the end. It's really deeply upsetting to me. I mean, I used to, my mom is actually from the border, um, originally from Texas and from that part of Texas, and I've crossed the border on foot several times going from actually El Paso to Juarez. Documented? Yes, I mean, I have my, I'm, I'm typically one of the only like white people uh, with my US passport. I get better treatment in that line than most other people do, which feels pretty uncomfortable. Um, it's really interesting when you cross over from the US side to the Mexican side, you throw 25 cents, or they might have raised it to 30 cents, in a little trough. You just throw it in as if you're doing a toll on the Jersey like Turnpike. Rose, yeah. yeah. You just throw it in. Nobody asks for your passport or papers or anything. You just waltz right on over. You can go to bars in Morris. They allow you to smoke inside. Highly recommend it. Um, and then on the way back, it's like hours and hours of waiting sometimes, and it's men with German shepherds and guns. And it's, I need to see your passport, and you go into this line and sorting and all these things. And it's just, it's a jarring experience, the contrast between crossing from U.S. to Mexico versus Mexico to U.S. I also think one of the really striking parts, and I, I encourage everybody to visit El Paso and Juarez, if they get the chance, um, you know, this is a city where it's they operate as sort of twin cities, as sister cities. But so many people, their lives are, you know, they span the border. Their lives are half on one side, half on the other side. I met a guy sitting in a bar in Juarez, an American citizen, born and raised in America, who fell in love with a Mexican woman. Uh, they got married, had two children, ultimately got divorced. But they have a joint custody agreement, and it's cross border. So you know, he runs a dental practice in Juarez. Yeah. He lives in El Paso. His kids split their time between Juarez and El Paso, and their family gatherings are on one side or the other. But that's how so many people in this part of the country live. The it's it's really good evidence, regardless of your political ideology, that lots of people engage in commerce and have all kinds of relationships. That uh, really, uh, the border is more of a hassle for them. It's. It's horrifying watching families be, even in this very like small and mundane way, it's harder for them to spend time with wow. each other because of this artificial line that we I, created. I think that this analysis that we just went through, like it gets it correct. Everybody wants this situation and the border to be safe. And currently yeah. the way that it is, it's not. It's not safe for anybody, Americans or otherwise. Big thank you to our friends at the Narratives Project for helping us out here. You can see more of their work at narrativesproject.com.